This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Well, let's have a nice, hopefully gentle start to the day while you wake up. A very quick one from me. Something we did on the very first day of the very first course. Cost classification behaviour. So I say very quick from me, I mean it's not much more than terminology. Uh, but let's make sure we're happy with the terminology. Uh, direct costs, indirect costs. I was going to ask what do we mean by them, but we'll be here all morning. I'll remind you what we mean. Uh, when we're doing costing, if we want the cost, if we're making desks and want the cost of a desk, direct costs are those you can measure in each individual unit, like the materials we use, like the labour we use, indirect costs or overheads are the other costs of production which you can't measure in each unit. Things like electricity for the machines, things like rent of the factory. Okay? Stop me when you need, because I really shouldn't need to spend many minutes on this sheet. Uh, the next one though, variable fixed costs. Remember, variable costs are those costs where the total changes with the level of production. So things like materials, the more you produce, the more in total you'll be spending. We all agree? Whereas fixed costs, fixed costs, things like the rent of the factory, the cost stays the same in total however many you produce. Again, we're also with me? Uh, Semi-variable and stepped, remember, are sort of variations on it. Semi-variable costs are costs like electricity, where part of the cost is fixed, I know I gave the same example before, but lighting the factory, presumably that cost stays fixed. We need to light the factory, however many units we make. But another part of the electricity running the machines is perhaps variable, that the more we produce, the more machines we use, the more the electricity. So semi-variable, when it's part fixed, part variable. We still there? And finally, in this category, stepped fixed costs. Um, stepped fixed cost is this business where you have a fixed cost. You've seen the graph before, but total cost, uh, units produced. Uh, the cost stays fixed, however many units we produce. However, up to a limit, but again, the standard example is rent of the factory. You're paying the rent, whatever happens, but once you're producing a certain number of units, maybe you need a second factory, and the cost suddenly goes up. You're paying rent on two factories. Again, am I making it clear to everybody? No problem. Uh, just one more heading, controllable, non-controllable. More relevant here when we come later to performance measurement. But if you're measuring how well a manager's doing, it's only fair to measure them on those costs they control. If uh, Liga's my manager of a department, any costs that I force on her, you know, if I insist that oh, she increases wages by 10%, it's not fair to measure how well she's doing on a higher wages bill when it was my decision, when she's no control over it. Are we clear? So, as I say, it's only fair to measure the manager on costs they control, costs where they make the decision. 
Finally, the one bit of numbers on this sheet is very common indeed. I say common, sorry, I should have said at the beginning, you all know there are 52 mark questions. Um, no one area will have that many questions, but there'll always be uh, a few on high-low. So let me remind you very quickly, it should be easy enough. Uh, in a month when the production was 10,000 units, the total cost was 60,000. In another month, the production was 18,000 and the costs were 100,000. I hope obviously it's not a fixed cost. If it was completely fixed, the cost would stay the same. It's, I hope, obviously not completely variable. If it was completely variable, 10,000 units, 60,000, would be $6 a unit. At a glance, it's not $6 a unit when you produce 18,000. And so here it's a combination of fixed and variable. And the approach always the same. The highest one, the production is 10,000 units. The cost is 60,000. The lowest one, there's only two. Oh, sorry. Oh, I said, a nice easy start to wake up. It, obviously, Neil hasn't woken up. Hello. Laura? Yes. yes. Um, oh, let me give her one sheet. Sorry, the highest one, I got the wrong way around, was 18,000 units. We spent a total of 100,000. The, the lowest one, we produced 10,000 units. The total was 60,000. And having got the highest and lowest, we look at the difference between the two. 8,000 units, $40,000. The reason being, if you remember, that the only reason the total cost will have changed. Any fixed cost will be the same both times. The extra cost must be the extra variable cost of the extra units. And so the variable cost per unit, if it's 40,000 for 8,000 units, $5. Having got the variable cost per unit, go to either of the two months to get the fixed cost. If I go to the second one, <coughs> excuse me, we know the total cost is 60,000. That's the total of the fixed and the variable. Well, we now know the total variable cost. There are 8,000, uh, sorry, 10,000 units. The variable cost $5 a unit is 50,000. And if the variable's 50 and the total's 60, the difference must be the fixed cost per month. All right? Then, so I said, what should be anyway, an easy start to the day. But I hope those make sense. Uh, I said earlier though, um, ooh, ooh, these two and a half days, we've got to get as much test practice as we can. The style, the speed. Can you please turn in the revision kit? And here's one for you, Lara. To what I hope will be an easy enough one, but can you turn to test four on page... Help, help, help. Um, test four on page 14. And before you do it, and again, forgive me, just one time, those of you who are on um, the F3 course, uh, two things, three things. <coughs> You've got to get used to time pressure, so in a moment I'll tell you what I want you to do. Uh, in the exam, you're given a sheet slightly similar to this, I'll give you the real one later, but you fill in the blobs.
And so, just to get used to the sheet, um, although as I say, the sheet you get is a bit different, the, the, the style's the same, that for each question that you've got the four choices, you fill in the blob for the one you think's right, if later you decide you're wrong, you put a cross through it and fill in the correct one. Are you with me? And I'll say it's important to get used to it. In the exam, I'm not worried here, but in the exam it has to be in black ink. You can't use pencil. Uh, finally, it's your choice, but in your own interests, I really think don't write in the um, revision kit. I've told you before, but all the tests are worth doing again, whether you find um, this one, for instance, really easy or really hard. It's worth doing again, whether it's tonight, whether it's next week, whenever. If you've written in the revision kit, then you can't really do it again, because you know what the answers are, all right? There are answers at the back, so you can always check later anyway.